Hey, it's Norm from Tested. Uh, one of the videos that we've gotten such a huge reaction to in the past couple weeks is our preview of the Glowforge laser cutter. Um, it's a really interesting product that after we did our video, people are picking it up, pre-ordering it, but we have so many more questions about it. So we made our way back to Glowforge's headquarters and we're gonna get a demo of some of its functionality and talk to its founder, Dan Shapiro, about some of the questions you guys have about the laser cutter. Dan, it's great to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for having us back. Absolutely. Uh, so I had a lot of questions. I think our users have a lot of questions about Glowforge, uh, but we want to show some cool stuff first. And uh, the laser cutter here does two really neat things. I think one, it really streamlines the, the cutting process. I've used the laser cutter that Adam has, for example, in his shop. And the process of getting a bitmap, a vector from a computer over to the software, to the cutter, it can be really stressful. Uh, can we just run through a demo of what it takes to get an image, like if I drew up and designed an image to the cutter? Absolutely, let's grab your logo and see if we can make something awesome out of it in like five minutes or less. What's the first step to that? Uh, so we're gonna start out, we'll take the image as a bitmap, we'll make it black and white, because right now we're just running black and white, we haven't added grayscale yet. So we'll turn it into black and white, and then we will bring it into Illustrator as a bitmap. We'll draw a vector around it so we have something to cut around, and then we'll send it to the laser. It'll cut and engrave it. Before we do that, though, we've got to position it on the material. And that's one of the things I always found really frustrating about using traditional lasers. So instead of using the normal approach of sort of an eyeball and looking at the head and the red dot, we're just going to see a picture of it, and we'll just drag it into the middle of the acrylic and hit print. And there are two cameras in the Glowforge. You have a camera on the lid and a camera on the laser itself. You're using just that camera on the lid to take a whole picture of the bed and then positioning whatever we drew and whatever we imported on top of that. Exactly. For this, we're going to use the low-res lid, which can grab a picture all at once. For really precision work, like if you wanted to flip a thick piece of material over it and cut it from the backside, then we would send the head over and get our super macro close-up of the corners to be able to register it after that flip. Or if you've done some really intricate pen work, we'd do a scan back and forth to get a really high-res scan. But for this, we're just gonna use some Sharpies. We'll use the lid cam so it's really quick and easy. For this demo, we uh, imported a PNG file, you know, a bitmap, a rasterized image, uh, and you work with rasters for etching and vectors for uh, cutting. Um, what's the workflow if you, you need to use Illustrator? Can you, can you use MS Paint even to send to Glowforge? Yeah, you can do, if all you wanna do is, is an engrave, you can use MS Paint. You can take something straight off your camera and drop it onto the, the hard drive. You've got two choices. If you're using Illustrator, then you just hit the Upload to Glowforge button. Uh, we've got a plugin that does that. If you're using other software, you just go to the Glowforge uh, interface, which is a web interface, drag the file onto it, and it drops it right into the preview. So you can drag it around and put it where you want. We can suck in uh, PDF, we can suck in PNG, TIFF, um, SVG, Illustrator, a whole bunch of different files. So we also use Inkscape around the office a lot, which is great, and it's free. Of course, we use Photoshop a lot when we're just doing images. Um, so it's really fun to kind of mix and match between engrave and cut all in a single, a single project. You have versatility in terms of the image types, and those file types will determine whether they have vectors and engraving built in, or one or the other, and you can combine those all in the Glowforge software. Exactly, and you can play with the settings too. So you can have a vector that doesn't cut all the way through, but just does a light line, and that does some really neat effects, because you get this really thin line that's like eight thousandths of an inch thick that comes from the laser moving quickly at low power, and that can, you can use that to embellish your bitmaps or to, uh, to do a drawing that's just in that, to do sort of like really fine line art. And we then cut out this guy, really cool demo. So that's a very basic example of something, a workflow that you would have in an existing cutter, but streamlined in the Glowforge. Let's do another demo. Let's do the Absolutely. drawing. I feel it's important to point out that this is the sum total of our design skills in five minutes. In five minutes, yeah. <laughs> this is what we came simple. up with. Awesome. Who knows what we could do with half an hour. <laughs> uh, but then also you guys allow for drawing. Again, making use yeah. of that camera. Uh, when Will did this demo earlier, he, he drew a circle. I wanted something a little more fancy. Can we, can we just draw like a, any picture? It. Let's do it, anything you want. Awesome, let's do it. So. I've drawn an image, Dan. I've drawn myself. Uh, a lovely image it was. 
And I'm using a Sharpie. Is that the requirement, like the thickness of the Sharpie? So if you want to do a low-res drawing and scan it quickly, a Sharpie works great. If you want to do a high-res drawing, then you can use any sort of fine tip ink, pencil, etc. Uh, and then we go in with a head and we do a more precise scan so we can pick up all the details. Uh -huh. There's a Settlers of Catan board that we did that was actually designed by an illustrator who didn't use any digital tools at all. She did the whole thing with pen and ink. And so that's an example where there's some really fine detail work there uh, that you'd want to pick up with the slower scan process. How does the software know if I'm drawing something, what to etch and what to cut out? Oh, let me show you. We've got a tool. You basically say, cut this out and engrave everything that's left. It's like a magic wand tool to select the edges. So yeah, if you've used the Photoshop magic wand tool or the GIMP magic wand tool, you'll be very familiar so with it. So you need to kind of close your circle. You got to make sure the edges all connect at some point or just draw a circle around a draw a, a outline shape. Yeah, if you want to cut around the outside, then you draw a line that represents that mm -hmm. cut. Um, you can also just draw a bunch of stuff and it'll cut each little thing out separately. If you want it all to be one thing, then you put a line around it. You can also play with all the settings. You can say, just engrave it, don't cut it, or just cut it, don't engrave it, anything you want. Awesome. Well, thanks for these demos. Would you mind sitting down and answering some more questions about the Glowforge? Let's go do it. Awesome.